In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to replace the factory SSD in a Sony Vio P series sub notebook. It will be similar steps for the spinning hard drive. Now I have the VGN 90HS. This was the first generation. It came out in 2009. They had a second generation, Revision 2, came out in 2010 before this was discontinued in 2011. Now my model has an Atom Z540 at 1.8 gigahertz, single core, two threads. The base models came with 1.3. You could either get one or two gigabytes of DDR2. It has an eight inch 1600 by 768 screen, an Intel GMA 500 graphics chipset. Has a 1.8 inch hard drive, either a 4200 RPM spinning drive or an SSD drive. You have a webcam, two USB ports, a memory stick, reader and an SD card reader. Now these came with Windows Vista initially. Later they came with Windows 7 when that was released and it ran faster. And aside, this is my second time opening this up. All the videos I saw on YouTube were replacing the spinning hard drive and this ended up being different, needing a different adapter. So I had to order that. Also in the end, I didn't really get a huge speed improvement over the factory SSD. I'm going to cover more of that in the end. And now to catch back up, you take out the battery. There's two tiny little screws in the battery compartment. Then underneath the rubber feet at the base of the laptop here, there are two screws. I already have the rubber feet off. And now to get inside, you're basically going to pull the keyboard towards yourself. It's going to slide about a quarter of an inch off the clips and you'll be able to hinge it forward. And now you can start removing all the screws. There's four longer silver screws at the top holding down the hinges. One of them is underneath that black tape in the upper right. Then there's eight smaller black screws all around. There's kind of arrows printed into the plastic showing you where they are. Uh, you shouldn't need to remove any ribbon cables or antenna cables.
So now we can pull the back cover off to get access to the drive. Kind of fold the keyboard back down temporarily. Put a piece of paper or cloth to protect the screen. Flip it over. And then there's two little slots that you'll kind of poke a tool into. And then the back cover will pop off. So here's where there's a bit of difference between a factory SSD and a factory 1.8 inch spinning hard drive. With the spinning hard drive, you just kind of pry it out. You just got a simple ribbon cable running across. With the factory SSD, you kind of see it has a printed circuit board on its ribbon cable. It also has three screws holding it in. And normally they're underneath some black plastic tape. It kind of took me a bit to figure this out. So like I said, I didn't really see any other videos or instructions on this. So next I'm going to remove the ribbon cable from the motherboard and then slide the drive out. I'm also going to take the caddy out. I'm not going to reuse this for this installation. Now on the side, if you're upgrading from the factory spinning hard drive, you're going to need an MSATA to 40 pin ZIF adapter like this. You can pick them up on Amazon. And one kind of note I've seen while I'm researching this, this ZIF connector on here won't quite grab the ribbon tight enough on most of these adapters. So you can put some Kapton tape on the back side away from the connectors to kind of thicken up the rib ribbon cable enough that it grabs it. So here's the adapter I'll be using. This is an MSATA to 1.8 inch micro SATA, also known as USATA adapter I just got from Amazon. Now the ribbon cable and this little circuit board, there's some double-sided tape holding it onto the top of the chips. I didn't really want to just pull this off because the circuit board is really, really thin. I thought it might crack it if you just kind of pulled on it. So instead I'm going to cut off the double-sided tape kind of right near the chips.
And next I'm going to put some double-sided tape onto the bottom of this to keep it from moving around. Probably going a little overboard here. A single piece probably would have been good enough. I'm trying to avoid sticking down to that ribbon cable at the bottom of the drive bay. And now we can start the reassembly. I'm going to put the back cover on, flip it over, and just put in the screws for the hinges first. So I'm going to turn it on and make sure the drive is recognized and everything's working before I fully put everything back together.
And aside here, I'm using an alligator clip from uh, Helping Hands to hold the keyboard straight up and down as I'm working with the insides here to not put strain on the ribbon cables at the base of the keyboard. So here I am in the BIOS. You can see it's recognized the hard drive is 256 gigabytes. The original was only 64. And take a quick look at the other BIOS menus. There isn't too much configure. Change the boot order. That could be useful. And then I'll put in the rest of the screws. So now we can put the keyboard back on. You're gonna slide it away from yourself, kind of the opposite of taking it off. The tricky thing is you need to make sure that the switches match up with the switches on the motherboard. So you got like the wireless switch that's gonna kind of poke up. So make sure the switch on the case is in the same position as the one on the motherboard. In this case, it's on. And then the power button is kind of a spring-loaded switch. So you need to make sure it's on the off position when you slide it in. Otherwise you can kind of either damage the switch or the switch may not actually do anything because it may not be engaging. The plastic on the case may not be engaging the one on the motherboard. So you just have to kind of carefully slide this around and make sure the switches don't move around as you're kind of trying to fit this into the clips.
And so now that it's all assembled, I'm going to turn it on, just boot into Vista. I'd already put an image of Vista onto this drive before I installed it. I'll kind of go over the best way to install an operating system later on in this video. Let's check some benchmarks. So first, here's a stock 64 gigabyte Samsung SSD that came from the factory. Now I had installed a Samsung PM851 M SATA drive. It's kind of the OEM version of the 850 Evo. You can see we're getting about 73 megabytes per second read, 46 write. And now when we look at the new drive, we can see we get 93 megabytes read, 51 write, so a little bit better improvement on the read. Now our random write is a lot better, but overall, not really a big improvement. Now this drive itself is capable of 500 megabytes read and write. That's when connected to a SATA 3 port. I kind of expected this being an older computer. Maybe it's only a SATA 2 port or even SATA 1, but upon closer inspection with hardware info, you can see that this is actually connected to an IDE channel that appears to be an AT5, limited to 100 megabytes per second. So with this upgrade, I got a lot more space, got a little bit better read speed, write speed, decent amount faster random speed, but it's not necessarily a massive upgrade over if you were upgrading the spinning hard drive versus the factory SSD. So now let's talk about operating systems. Now these originally came with Windows Vista, and then later on they came with Windows 7 when that became available. Windows 7 seems to be preferred and runs smoother than Vista, it uses less resources. When I got my notebook, when I first turned it on, it was already at the Windows Vista setup screen. So the seller had reset it back, did a factory restore. It still had the restore partition on it. So I immediately created an image of the hard drive and I'll upload that to archive.org and link it below. It's a Ghost 11.5.1 clone image. Now the reason I like using Ghost, well, for one, I'm kind of familiar with it. I used to use it back in the day. It's also kind of available on archive.org, other places. But you can find a boot CD with Ghost on it, boot off a USB CD-ROM drive plugged into the VAIO. You can plug in a USB flash drive and image to or from it. It also is pretty compatible with the VAIO because I kind of noticed I was trying to boot off some like Hiren's boot CDs and various Linux-based live CDs. And they kind of didn't like that Atom processor wouldn't boot, but this Ghost CD booted just fine. I was able to image the full hard drive. There's also a Windows EXE of Ghost. So that way you could image the drive on a standard Windows machine before you install it in the VAIO. Now you can find ISOs for other recovery media, also on archive.org. You just gotta be carefully get it for your model. I'm also uploading all the VAIO specific wallpaper that came pre-installed. There was some Series P specific wallpaper. That's what you're seeing right now. And then some more general VAIO wallpaper. It'll be linked in the description. And now one thing that I ran into with mine, using the built-in recovery image, restores it back to factory. And since mine was a Japan only model, the Japanese keyboard. The whole version of Windows is also in Japanese. 
I didn't really do a clean install. I kind of wanted to keep all those original applications and the wallpapers and everything kind of oh, it was from factory. But it's kind of tricky to do setup and stuff when everything's all in Japanese. So kind of a limitation of Windows, either Vista or 7, comes with basic or home premium. You can only install one language. You have to have enterprise or ultimate in order to install more languages. But there's this program called Vistalizer, which actually runs in Vista or Windows 7. That's you kind of swap at other language packs. You can kind of swap over to English, do some setup, and then swap back. Now the site itself seems to be gone, but it is alive on archive.org. So here's like the download page. You can download the app. Then you need to download your English pack for 32-bit either Vista, uh, be service pack one in this case. You can find these language packs. These are just standard Microsoft language packs. You can still download these directly from Microsoft. If you're using Vista, you're also going to need to download this Windows Search 4.0 for SP 132-bit that you can also kind of just find from Microsoft. You'd search for the knowledge base number. There's the instructions on the page. I recommend you install it in internal mode. By default, it wants to install in express mode. Follow these instructions here. Then you better swap between English and Japanese. Now my final project for this laptop is to upgrade it to Windows 7. It should run a little faster, be a little bit more compatible with browsers and stuff. Now I wasn't able to find any kind of Windows 7 recovery image for these, but back in the day, Sony did send out a Windows 7 home premium upgrade kit that came with a Windows upgrade CD, but then also like a companion CD that I believe comes with like applications and all the drivers that you need. So I've ordered a used one off of eBay. I'll give that a try. I'll see about posting at least the companion CD onto archive.org. If it has useful drivers and things that may help people out. I plan to just do like an in-place upgrade because I want to still keep all the original Sony applications, kind of all the bloatware that you normally blow away on a modern PC, but kind of like it for the historic factor. I think this should be the best way to preserve it. That's it. Thanks for watching.